In this video, I will be sharing with you some information on the types of anal cancer. We have other videos on the meaning of anal cancer, how to treat anal cancer, the symptoms of anal cancer, and the causes of anal cancer. Anal cancer can develop when cells in or on the anus change or grow uncontrollably. The abnormal growth of cells in the anus is called anal intraepithelial neoplasia, or ANE. It is also called anal squamous intraepithelial lesions, or cells. Tumors that develop in or on the anus are either benign, which means non-cancerous, or are malignant, which means cancerous. Abnormal cells that develop in the anus can go away on their own or they can become cancerous. The different types of anal cancer are based on the type of anal cells in which the cancer develops. Different types of cancer can start in the anal region, and I will be briefly describing each of them. The first one is squamous cell carcinomas. Most anal cancers in the United States are squamous cell carcinomas. These tumors come from the squamous cells that line most of the anal canal and the anal margin. Squamous cell carcinomas in the anal canal have grown beyond the surface and into the deeper layers of the lining, as opposed to carcinoma in situ. Squamous cell carcinomas are treated similarly to squamous cell carcinomas of the skin elsewhere in the body. Cloacogenic carcinomas, also called basaloid or transitional cell carcinomas, are a type of squamous cell cancer, and they develop in the transitional zone, also called the cloaca. These cancers look slightly different under a microscope, but they behave and are treated like other squamous cell carcinomas of the anal canal. A small number of anal cancers are known as adenocarcinomas. These can develop in cells that line the upper part of the anus near the rectum, or in the glands under the anal mucosa that release their secretions into the anal canal. Most anal adenocarcinomas are treated the same way as rectal carcinomas. Adenocarcinomas can also start in apocrine glands, which is a type of sweat gland of the perianal skin. Paget's disease is a type of apocrine gland carcinoma that spreads through the surface layer of the skin. Paget's disease can affect skin anywhere in the body but most often affects skin of the perianal area, vulva, or breast. This condition should not be confused with Paget's disease of the bone, which is a different disease. Basal cell carcinomas are a type of skin cancer that can develop in the perianal skin. These tumors are much more common in areas of skin exposed to the sun, such as the face and hands, and account for only a small number of anal cancers. They are often treated with surgery to remove the cancer. Melanomas are cancers that develop from cells in the skin or anal lining that make the brown pigment called melanin, and only a very small portion of anal cancers are melanomas. Melanomas are far more common on the skin in other parts of the body, and if they are found at an early stage before they have grown deeply into the skin or spread to lymph nodes, they can be removed with surgery, and the outlook for long-term survival is very good. But because anal melanomas are hard to see, most are found at a later stage. If possible, the entire tumor is removed with surgery. If all of the tumor can be removed, a cure is possible. If the melanoma has spread too far to be removed completely, other treatments may be given. Gastrointestinal stromal tumors, or GISTs, are cancers which are much more common in the stomach or small intestine, but on rare cases, they can start in the anal region. When these tumors are found at an early stage, they are removed with surgery. If they have spread beyond the anus, they can be treated with drug therapy. But, what are the treatment options? Anal cancer treatment depends on a number of factors. If cancer spreads to another part in the body from where it started, doctors call it metastatic cancer. If this happens, it is a good idea to talk with doctors who have experience in treating it. Doctors can have different opinions about the best standard treatment plan. Also, clinical trials might be an option. Learn more about getting a second opinion before starting treatment, so you are comfortable with your treatment plan chosen. Your treatment plan may include a combination of surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. Palliative care will also be important to help relieve symptoms and side effects. For most patients, a diagnosis of metastatic cancer is very stressful and, at times, difficult to bear. 
patients and their families are encouraged to talk about the way they are feeling with doctors, nurses, social workers, or other members of the healthcare team. It may also be helpful to talk with other patients, including through a support group. Now, what about remission and the chance of recurrence? A remission is when cancer cannot be detected in the body and there are no symptoms. This may also be called having no evidence of disease or NAD. A remission may be temporary or permanent. This uncertainty causes many people to worry that the cancer will come back. While many remissions are permanent, it's important to talk with your doctor about the possibility of the cancer returning. Understanding your risk of recurrence and the treatment options may help you feel more prepared if the cancer does return. If the cancer does return after the original treatment, it is called recurrent cancer. It may come back in the same place, which is called a local recurrence, nearby, which is called regional recurrence, or in another place, which is known as distant recurrence. When this occurs, a cycle of testing will begin again to learn as much as possible about the recurrence. After testing is done, you and your doctor will talk about your treatment options. In most cases, the treatment plan will include the treatments described above, such as surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy, but they may be used in a different combination or given at a different pace. Your doctor may also suggest clinical trials that are studying new ways to treat this type of recurrent cancer. Whichever treatment plan you choose, palliative care will be important for relieving symptoms and side effects. People with recurrent cancer often experience emotions such as disbelief or fear. Patients are encouraged to talk with their health care team about these feelings and ask about support services to help them cope. What if treatment fails? Recovery from cancer is not always possible. If the cancer cannot be cured or controlled, the disease may be called advanced or terminal. This diagnosis is stressful and advanced cancer is difficult to discuss for many people. However, it is important to have open and honest conversations with your doctor and healthcare team to express your feelings, preferences, and concerns. The healthcare team is there to help. Many team members have special skills, experience, and knowledge to support patients and their families. Making sure a person is physically comfortable and free from pain is extremely important. Patients who have advanced cancer and who are expected to live less than six months could consider a type of palliative care called hospice care. Hospice care is designed to provide the best possible quality of life for people who are near the end of life. You and your family are encouraged to think about where you would be most comfortable, at home, in the hospital, or in a hospice environment. Nursing care and special equipment can make staying at home a workable alternative for many families. For more information on this type of cancer, and all other cancer types, please visit www.ecancertips.com. Thanks for watching.